Hey, look, just hold on a minute. Now, I know that I'm known for being on television with the noisiest cars and bikes that you can find here on this planet. And I know when I go out as a DJ, I'm always working with big sound systems, making lots and lots of noise, but even I want to change sometimes. So today, here I am. The sun is out, it's beautiful. I'm in this quiet little village just outside of Hitchin in Hertfordshire called Preston. And I'm here to relax and get away from all the row that I'm used to. I'm off to the pub now for a quiet drink. See you later. Well, the man who shattered my silence here in this beautiful little village is this man standing next to me. This is Steve Pateman. He owns what must be one of the loudest streetcars in the world, a Vauxhall Calibra. Steve, tell me a little bit about you. How did you get into cars, etc.? Um, basically, I'm a mechanic by trade. Um... Obviously, been into cars since I was probably about 15. Um, first car I had was a Mark 1 Escort, and the first car I actually raced at Santa Pod was the 3 litre Capri. And then um, the Mark 1 Escort had various engine changes and ended up with the actual Pontiac engine that's in the Kluber now. Okay, so let's just take a look at this fabulous machine and see what you've done to it. So let's just walk to the back and we'll try and uh, find out exactly uh, what you've done to this car. Now, how much of the car, Steve, is original Calibra? Basically, just the outer shell is the Vauxhall Calibre. Um, I mean, once the, the car was originally a front end right off, but you cut the front off, floor out, all you're actually using is basically all four wings, roof panel, doors, and that's it. And are these, what we're seeing here, is this original Vauxhall Calibre, or are there replacement lightweight panels on here? The only lightweight panels on it is the boot lids fiberglass, um, the sunroof infill panel, and the bonnet. Apart from that, the rest, wings, uh, bumpers, everything's all original Vauxhall. So your idea then was to keep this as near to standard road trim as you could, but have a car that is worthy of racing on a drag strip? Yeah, basically um, what I was trying to achieve was, I mean, I, I wanted a car that I could use on the road as well as just on the trailer to the track and back again and not being able to start it because of no exhaust, things like that. So basically I wanted it on the road, but then sort of I wanted to keep it as standard looking from the outside as possible. OK, well, turning to the back here, it's got massive wheels on the back. What sort of wheels have you got on it? And what sort of back axle have you got on it? Um, the back axle's a, a narrowed 9-inch Ford. Um, wheels are 15 by 15 centerline Convo Pros with 22 and a half, 33 Mickey Thompson tyres. So these are street legal tyres you've got on it? Yep, 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 they're street tyres. Um, I mean, basically, they're, they're the biggest you can get. Um, going back to the days of when I run my Escort, the, the back wheels are only 7x14s and the car wouldn't run consistent because it wouldn't grip. So basically, this time, I wanted to build the car as competitive as possible. So I've just sort of gone for the biggest of everything. And the nine inch Ford rear end, that's bulletproof? Yeah, yeah, that was all um, uh, narrowed by John Webster who, who built the chassis, but yeah, it's got um, the, the casing's all back braced, it's got aftermarket internals, shafts, everything. Okay, well let's just have a look inside this car. Even this looks fairly complicated, the, uh, the getting in procedure. It's uh, very much Formula One this, the steering wheel comes off and uh, removing all the harnesses so that you uh, don't sit down on something really nasty and sharp. And then it's a, a quick climb over the roll cage and then the steering wheel goes back on. Who designed all of this? Was it you? No, um, up until this, I've actually done all my own work, but um, I wanted to build a car this time that when it actually got to the start line, I knew it was gonna be as competitive as possible. And back when I originally decided to build another car, basically I was just looking what cars were on the track that were competitive. And um, there was um, Brian Paintman's Firebird, um, Danny Cottrell's Pop, uh, Paula Atkins' 100E, all were uh, tube chassis built by John Webster. So basically phone John Webster down in South End and it went from there. Right, so you're, you're actually sitting in a full cage, aren't you? you? You've got a full cage around you. Yeah, yeah. That's purely for safety in racing, etc. Yeah, I mean, basically, um, I took a lot of John's advice on most of it. Um, and and a Funny Car Cage, he, he said you'd won. Um, at the moment, the car's flying quicker this year than I ever thought it would. Um, so, yeah, basically, it's just for safety. All right, well, look, let's guide us around it because it, it doesn't look like my standard Vauxhall Calibra. Tell us a little bit about it. I mean, let's go into the, uh, the controls in the centre there. What is that? Um, basically, it's just it, it's like a ratchet-type gear lever so that um, you, you cannot 
um, miss a gear or, or select a wrong gear. I mean, basically, that is back in first gear now. Um, you leave the, the start line in first gear, bang it once, that's in top gear, and that is it. You cannot go no further, so... So is it just a two-speed gearbox? Yeah, it's a two-speed power glide. Right, OK. And all of... The, you've got standard controls here. What about the light on the uh, steering column here? Um, it's an actual pro light. Most people um, use rev counters, but just through past experience, I couldn't really see the point of a rev counter because you never really get time to actually look at it. Um, most of the expensive rev counters have got like small gear change lights in them, so basically that is an adjustable gear change light. You just put um, whatever rev limit chip you want in it for whatever revs you actually want to change gear. What you've got here is a safer road car than a normal road car. Yeah, I mean, I'd feel safer having an accident in that. Not that I want one, but I'd feel safer in that than a normal road car. Talking of accidents, talking of accidents, I have noticed a little bit of a scar down here. I presume this is from racing of some kind? No, no, that was an um, incident with a shopping trolley in a car park, believe it or not. <laughs> Uh, you really do use it then for weekly uh, chores? Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, if, if I come home from work, and yeah, we'd nip out in it, sort of use it when we want. Well, good luck for this year. Lovely, right.